Good morning, everyone. My name is Sakura. I currently live and work in Tokyo. For work, I have a learning and development position at an American consulting firm, obviously in the Tokyo branch. So if you're interested in learning more about this field of work, I hope you'll join me for the rest of this video. Hey, good morning, or maybe afternoon for you. It's morning in Japan, so. A couple of times a week, I usually have a meeting with someone on a global team, which is someone usually based in the US, so I have a lot of early mornings. This one wasn't too bad. It started from 8 a.m. and went for an hour. This is a certification session where I demoed a training that I'll be facilitating in the future. And this is where they check for my skills and make sure that I'm ready. For the remainder of my morning, I did a lot of housekeeping tasks, so that includes anything like checking emails and answering them, checking the updates on any tickets that I've submitted online on issues and inquiries that I may have had this past few weeks, as well as doing a little bit of data work. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the administrative task that I'm doing, which is pulling data and why data is so important in the field of L&D, which you don't really realize until you actually do this role. L&D is an interesting field because most people understand what you do at face value, which is the trainings that you run, the programs that you implement, etc., etc. However, what's more important is not just executing these trainings, but thinking strategically about how these trainings will contribute to the overall business. So what this means is we have to be really good at collecting data. The time that people invest into trainings and learning and development, what does that actually give back? So in that sense, when you're collecting the data and thinking about what to collect or you know, what kind of data to collect, you always have to be thinking, how do I answer that question? What's actually interesting is that depending on the company and the culture and their you know, value of learning, as well as the company's maturity, meaning, you know, let's say a tech startup that has like 10 people versus a, a conglomerate that has like tens of thousands of people, depending on the maturity of the company too, the learning outcomes and expectations from L&D team is very, very different. Some people just expect you to run a program and then other leaders are asking you, why are you doing this program? What is the value of this? So always making sure you understand where the market is, what your company is trying to accomplish, where the L&D sits in your company to accomplish what business goals that they have. That is really key to understanding. On an ordinary day where I'm working from home, for lunch, I'll usually have leftovers from dinner the night before. My husband and I have a system every week where we take turns cooking, and since he cooked yesterday, we have leftovers for lunch for both of us today too. Last night we made broccoli and chickpea based broccoli patties with couscous and some veggies. I like to maximize my relaxing time for lunch by watching TV usually. And I'm currently an avid user of Apple TV Plus. We're currently watching the show called Hijack, which is really, really good. But today I was in a different mood, so I went on Amazon Prime to finish The Summer I Turned Pretty, or at least watch an episode. My friend recommended me this one.
So first things first in strategy, what you have to do is thinking about where you are, where you want to go, and then how are you going to get there? So in terms of where you are now, so you have to do pretty much an analysis of your market and your company. What are the challenges? What are people looking for? What are the learning needs that we have here? And to answer that question, what you need to do is pretty much talk to all of the stakeholders that you think need to be involved in this conversation. So for me, that would be, for example, my HRBP who looks over, you know, talent management here in our market. I also took a lot of time to meet in a small group discussion with some of the leaders here, had an intake discussion of what kind of learning needs that they see for their teams and for this company. Next is defining where you want to go. What are the learning goals that we have? And for this, you'll get a lot of input locally and globally. And what I mean by is that if you're working for a global company, there's going to be specific learning goals that your team and your leaders and your stakeholders will want to achieve. But then there's also another voice of global teams, right? What global, you know, headquarters or other markets have been doing that we should be aligning to that. So thinking of those two kind of inputs, you have to figure out what is right for your market. Now that you've defined where you are, let's call that point A. And then where you want to go with the business goals or your learning goals, that's point B. The strategy is all in the middle, right? What's the best part of a sandwich? It's the middle with all the meats. So let's talk a little bit about how I personally break that down. The first and foremost thing is breaking down into different sections or digestible, actionable things, right? So within the process that you're trying to build, what are some of the key priority areas? Or if you want to get real corporate jargony, what I like to use is Get, you know, call them pillars. And then once you establish those different focus areas, you're going to break that down into smaller actionable goals. The second thing that you need to look at is timeline. When do you want to accomplish what you want to accomplish? I know it sounds very simplified. It does take a lot of back and forth, whether that's defining the goals, you know, communicating and aligning with your stakeholders, looking at limitations of timelines, and then who you're going to be working with what. So there's a lot of different, you know, stakeholder management that you have to do in between. So if project management or program management is something that scares you, I really cannot recommend a strategic role within L&D. But personally, that's something that I really like.